Yes, yeah, sir. -y. I'm not freaking blind, guys. It's Squalo style. I think it's Thursday. You could die? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Geez, you know. Oh, yeah, because it goes on and on and on. For all you haters, there's something to chew on for the next couple of minutes. Welcome to another video from Guaylao 60. You know how Trump, yes, Donald Trump, am I picking on the United States again? Probably, it's, it. it's so easy. Uh, but you know how Donald Trump back a couple of years ago started a trade war with China? And uh, he, was, he was saying that, and bear with me, he was saying that China is not buying enough American goods. Well, you know, maybe commodities and stuff like that, there's a little bit of a trade deficit, but I want to talk about a different trade deficit uh, that the United States has with China. Uh, let's, let's, start, let's start with uh, the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. See, China doesn't just buy uh, commodities, goods, uh, grains, uh, natural resources, whatever from the United States. They also, what they, they're smart. They diversify their portfolios. Yes, they don't just buy uh, stuff in China or the Asian Forum. They go overseas to the United States and they buy things like the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And this is probably the most prestigious hotel in all of the United States. Presidents stay at the Waldorf Astoria. Uh, at least the presidents used to stay at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel up until Obama uh, period where he figured that it was a security risk because it was Chinese owned. So he no longer stays there. But that doesn't mean the place ain't worth two billion bucks, guys. So, and I think that's an insurance company, and Bang Insurance, that bought it. A, a Chinese insurance company bought the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. So there's two billion uh, deficit that, uh, because I don't think that there's any American companies buying anything over here in China as far as hotels or you know what I mean but it doesn't stop there China actually owns uh, about 1.1 trillion dollars in US debt so when the United States is out there yeah I was drinking beer when the United States is out there uh, buying and s spending money on military spending money on whatever their social welfare program spending money on uh, golfing trips for Donald Trump you know that money's got to come from somewhere it just doesn't go poof out of out of, out of uh, the unicorns arse type thing you know what I mean uh, fairy dust and, and uh, unicorn farts but so China owns 1.1 trillion in American debt plus they, they, they own a bunch of bonds and stuff also but uh, the idea is that uh, they're the United States is super indebted to China, so it's not just the commodities, it's not just the natural resources. They're, they're buying a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, they actually own, they own Motorola. Yeah, see, this is, this is pretty big. Motorola is a pretty big company, guys. So they own the Waldorf Astoria, 1.1 trillion in, uh, in US debt and Motorola, but it doesn't stop there. AMC, the largest movie theater chain in the whole United States of America is owned by a Chinese company. So, like, if you wanna watch a movie and you're going out to watch a movie in the United States, chances are a percentage of every ticket that you buy goes into the pocket of some Chinese businessman. Doesn't that make you feel good? So when, when Trump's saying that China's not buying enough American goods, uh, he's, he's obviously not looking at movie theaters and uh, Motorola, the debt. Yeah, he's, he's not looking at the Waldorf Astoria or uh, there's a bunch of other hotels too. Yes, the Chinese own the Ritz-Carlton too. You guys, it's it's just one of those things. So, uh, yeah, they're buying up all the good stuff. The Fairmont Hotel in Scottsdale, Arizona, owned by the Chinese. Uh, the Four Seasons in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, owned by the Chinese. So, you know what I mean? Uh, are the Chinese buying up the United States of America? One hotel at a time? 
And when you go to your local grocery store, what, what, what do you think is owned by the Chinese? Smithfield doesn't sound like a Chinese name, but it is. It's uh, Smithfield Foods. All Smithfield Foods is owned 100% by Chinese companies. Uh, why? So like when you're buying that bacon or that ham, uh, yes, you're, uh, you're buying it from China. Well, not really from China because it's in the United States, but it is a Chinese company. So when you think that you're buying American and you're buying Smithfield because, boy, that was an American brand name, wasn't it? No, it's not. It's, it's, it's owned by China. or a Chinese company. And you want to talk about entertainment. Legendary Entertainment Corporation is owned by China. Yes, it is. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't stop there, guys. When you, when you go to the store and you're going to buy yourself a stove or you're going to buy yourself a dishwasher or you're going to buy yourself a fridge and you say, well, General Electric, well, I know, I know General Electric is an American company made in America for Americans and General Electric has a red, white and blue, just like the flag. No, no, I'm sorry to burst your bubbles, guys. General Electric is actually owned by a Chinese company. So, uh, you know, it, it's not just the hotels, it's not just the entertainment companies, it's not just the national debt, it's not, it's, it's appliances. It's, when I was looking on the internet the other day, there was, in these, I'm only talking here about the larger companies that are owned by Chinese companies and, and organizations here in, well, there in the United States. Uh, there's thousands, literally thousands of companies owned by Chinese uh, entities in the United States of America. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to put the, the scroll of all these companies on this video, but I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Here's one for all you gamers out there, Riot Games. Yeah, the biggest video game company in the world, Riot Games, is owned by a Chinese company. Yes, Riot Games. I didn't think so. But so all you gamers out there, yes, you're playing Chinese games now. Get used to it. It's, it's going to be going like this in the future for, for years and years. Sorry. And check this one out. And this one will hit close to you. Ingram Micro is a, a company that distributes iPhones. <laughs> yeah, iPhones and Cisco network equipment. So uh, when you're buying an iPhone or Cisco network equi equipment, you're buying it from, you got it, a Chinese company. It's being distributed. But you're not really buying it from a Chinese company, but when it gets distributed to stores, to you as a consumer, uh, it's being distributed by a Chinese company. No, no, no Chinese company, no iPhone for you. No Cisco network equipment for you because it wouldn't get there without a Chinese company. And when you're thinking the Park Avenue Plaza, maybe they don't own all of it, but they do own 49% of the Park Avenue Plaza. They also own about a half of the, the General Motors building. Oh yeah, you think General Motors is all American? General Motors, come on guys. Uh, While well, the building, General Motors building, is uh, about half owned by the Chinese. Get out of here, can't be. Yes, it's true. Look it up. Oh, and I got the background. This is this is the Chaoyang district of China, or uh, this is the Chaoyang district of Nanning. And then you've got a boat that is cruising by. The river here is pretty deep, but you see the new buildings being built. And then the, you've got the old Yongjiang Hotel there that's been there forever. Then let me let me turn around here. Like, look at look at over here. See, this is this is a pretty neat area of, of uh, Nanning City. This is this is sort of like a city in my heart. Uh, love it here. You, you, you've got the you know the new buildings that look like old buildings. That's all cement. I watched them build that. It's there's no wood in that sucker. It's a uh, it's a, but it is a beautiful building. And then you you know you've got this is like the old downtown of Nanning City. Gotta love it. Anyways, I digress. Let's get back to the People's Republic of the United States of, of uh, China. So you guys know this, that, that when, when uh, you get big corporations in a place like the United States, they lobby the governments to do their bidding and the governments work for the big corporations and the little guy gets screwed and that's just the way it is. Well, 
What happens when all of those big corporations are Chinese corporations? Something to think about, something to, to, to sharpen your teeth on for all you haters out there. Billions of Chinese dollars, well, really American dollars, but billions of uh, dollars come out of China into the United States, uh, you know, not just buying corporations, buying houses, uh, farms, uh, mining companies in Canada, Vancouver, the houses in Vancouver have gone through the roof, mainly because of the Chinese purchasers, and, and uh, is it a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know, it's a really good thing if, uh, say you bought your house in Vancouver for $500,000 uh, 12 years ago and now it's worth $5 million, uh, you're not going to be one of these people that whine and cry about it. Uh, you're going to say, oh, geez, that was good. When uh, the city of Vancouver can tax you 1.5% on your property value at $5 million, well, the city of Vancouver is saying, right on, guys, uh, up, up, up more type thing. Uh, the people that can't afford a house, yeah, maybe they'd be a little bit bitched out. But you see, the thing is that uh, China is spending money around the world. They're diversifying their portfolio. They're spending billions of dollars a year in the United States of America to buy corporations, to buy properties, to buy, you know, basically whatever they want. It's, it's, a, it's a smart financial move because diversifying your portfolio, having a worldwide portfolio, just makes sense. Um, so when people like Donald Trump said, well, you know, they're not buying enough of our stuff. Well, maybe next time he says that, when he's got nothing else to do, sitting in his bunker because there's too many rioters outside. Oh, and did you see that when he cleared out the rioters? in front of the White House so he could walk across the, the street and get a photo op in front of the church and he holds up his Bible. I'll use a Huawei cell phone, that's my Bible. But the Bible was upside down and backwards. Now, this is a guy you're taking uh, advice from? This is a guy that's leading you? My God, Martha, what the hell's the matter with you people? So when you understand that, that China owns a lot of the United States, when you when you understand that China owns a lot of places like Canada and the UK, uh, they have corporate entities all over the world. They're strong. So when you say, "Well, we're going to take China down," um, man, you'd have to take yourself down. Uh, everybody would have to go down with China because China owns a big chunk of what you think you are, and uh, it's a world economy. It's a it's a it's it's the way it is. I thought it was a bad thing to have a, a, you know, the new world order. But after you think about it, when everything is sort of diversified around the world, every country owns stuff in every other country. And, uh, you know, maybe that's a kumbaya moment where everybody finally understands that the world is just one big place that we all live in. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a good thing. I think... Uh, as, as China integrates into the rest of the world through corporations, through uh, people moving around the world, buying houses, buying farms, buying mines, buying corporations, all of these different things. Uh, as soon as we're, we're fully integrated around the world or they're fully integrated around the world and people like me are integrated into places like China, uh, maybe the rest of the world will start looking at China differently as a partner, as a friend, rather than as an enemy because if you want to stay in the Waldorf Astoria or uh, Jackson Hole, what's a, what's the one? Four Seasons in Jackson Hole, Wyoming or the Fairmont in Scottsdale, Arizona, you know, you're, 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 then, you're, then you're living in a Chinese hotel. So go figure guys. Um, anyway, it's so hot out here. My foot, my foot. Uh, just stuck to the ground <laughs> like seriously it's uh my 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 uh my sandals are melting to this oh my god and and my eyes are burning because the sweat is rip, dripping in my eyes and uh i haven't had a beer for like about an hour so what's next hmm. what do you think is next i'll catch you after my beer and that's another video from Gui Lao 60 If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button, 
hit the bell. Don't forget to resubscribe, guys, and never forget to put a couple bucks on the children's Patreon account. It's for a good cause. It's for poor rural Chinese children. Uh, they just need a helping hand. We can give them that helping hand. Help me help them. Thanks for watching. Bye now.